Hi, this is Rick Hill for Cooking with the Doctor Show. And today, we're going to be talking about food. All food. Food in general, before we do any actual cooking demonstrations. What I've done is I've gone to my local stores uh, in San Diego and I've purchased these products not from gigantic health food stores. A lot of these products, by the way, are not priced when you buy the organic form. They actually are just about the same price as non-organic. Not always, but a good percentage of the time. So these are the things I don't trade on. These are the things I'm not going to let other people vote for me and I eat things that are going to put me back in the hospital. It's been 38 years since I've been sick and I'm not going to get back to that state if I can help it. God willing and the creek don't rise. So let's go and let's talk about some of these foods. One of the things that we want to get right away, of course, is organic eggs and not just free range. Sometimes free range is where at the end of a mile long shelter they have a you know a, a six inch door at the end where one or two of the, of the <laughs> chickens accidentally wander out in the yard and get lost. I've seen the photos. I've seen the movies of that. Now these are fed, these chickens are fed organic grain. That means that they don't have the chemicals in them the pesticides, the herbicides, the algicides. They don't have hormones. They don't have antibiotics in them. So I only get organic eggs. This is the old brand that you can get at Safeway or Vaughn's or wherever you live if they have that uh, chain. And uh, these are priced right. They really are not that expensive. So they, they look great. They taste great. You're just going to love working with organic eggs. In our films, we're going to be working with the organic eggs. I'll show you how to take this little pan and how to make them in about six, eight minutes without a bunch of water. And you've never had eggs that tasted that good. Here's another thing I do. Some people think once in a while this is cheating. I don't think so. This is frozen, the O brand, organic corn. Once again, all those harmful uh, chemicals are not used. Monsanto's just going to have to take a buy on this one. Uh, we're not going to buy their chemicals. We're not going to use what they're doing. And we're going to order the organic, organic brand. And I will, once again, take my little one quart pot and I'll fill that with the peas or with the corn and the peas. And then what I'll do is just rinse them, put it on low, and in about 10 minutes you've got this beautiful same color, beautiful odor. They don't, blend, they don't mix when you're doing that and they taste just great. Uh, let's talk about gluten-free. You want to? Uh, this is the best tasting, mushiest, Wonder Bread-like uh, gluten-free bread that's on the market today. And there's other good brands, um, but this is the one that I really like. And, 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 and what a difference it makes. Now, Dr. Mark Hyman has written an article. He calls it Franken-wheat. <laughs> I like that guy. Franken-wheat. In other words, he says, the wheat that you and I, you and I, our parents, our grandparents ate is nothing like the wheat today. That doesn't resemble it in any form. It's even chemically different. And this is made, let me look at the directions here and give it to you. Let's see, potato starch, brown rice flour, modified tapioca starch, uh, vegetable oil, uh, you see what I mean? But this will not make you react. Let me tell you just quickly, uh, I went gluten-free in 2004 and had a, an amazing difference in my health. Just amazing. Uh, the headaches that I've been having in my own life, even when I was fasting and eating correctly, the, the headaches were constant. But until I got off gluten, uh, my health was just not a complete picture. So it causes inflammation. That's what Dr. Mark Hyman and Dr. Francisco Contreras believe. So if you want to reduce inflammation and so your fingers and joints work good, go with gluten-free. Now, let's talk a little bit about meat. We don't use much meat, do we? Especially if you're in the first five years of your recovery, you don't need much of this at all. I'm going to show you how to prepare meat, but this should feed a family of six. Am I coming through loud and clear? <laughs> this is not for one hamburger here. 
That's my point. This is, and by the way, look at it. Let's read it. This is from Trader Joe's. No antibiotics, no added hormones, 100% grass fed, and this is organic ground beef. Now, most grocery stores now actually carry it. If they don't, you go up and say, why don't you carry some of this in the frozen section? It'll keep, but we would like to buy that. So that's ground hamburger. Here's another one, which is, of course, chicken. So once a week on treat day, or what I call cheat day, Sunday, we would make organic chicken. I am going to show you how to fry chicken without oil, and it tastes better. That's right. The natural oils from the meat come down to the chicken and give it that nice crusty glaze, caramelization, and it's delicious. My granddaughters love it when I don't use oil when I make chicken sandwiches for them. So there it is, uh, sustainably farmed, raised without antibiotics. Don't cheat on that. You say, well, Sundays is pot roast day. What we like is pot roast. Less than two pounds for the whole family. You get what I mean? We're not gonna go out and order half a cow. <laughs> We're not gonna have prime rib that you need a step ladder in order to eat the thing. Don't do that. If you want to treat once a week, Sunday dinner, you want to you want a pot roast, then we're going to do this, and it's it's raised completely all natural, no nitrates added, no antibiotics, no added hormones, all vegetarian feed, free range, and someone whistled and sang to it when it was alive. What I'm saying to you, don't eat the don't eat the bad food, and you can afford this one is twelve dollars. Okay, and it should feed a family of four. Why? Because when you treat yourself to a little meat, you just slice off a little piece and put lots of vegetables around it, a good potato, and you're good to go, and you don't feel like your life is over. Am I getting through? Am I talking to you? Well, Rick, the, the reason why I usually recommend for our patients to limit, importantly, the amount of animal protein that they consume is due to a number of studies that have been published in the medical literature. And, and really the first one was published almost 80 years ago. And uh, Dr. Otto Warburg obtained a Nobel Prize for finding out the difference between the metabolism of the benign cell and the malignant cell. And he was able to show that malignant cells love animal protein. With the tools that we have now, we know the reason for that. What happens is that protein levels in our system after consuming animal meat rises the level of some proteins and the main one is called NF-kappa B. And NF-kappa B uh, uh, promotes a cascade of, of actions in our body that are beneficial to the tumor and the tumor takes advantage of this and will grow faster and the dead cells or, or the, the cells of the tumor uh, are more resistant to death, resistant to apoptosis. And that is the reason why I want you all to limit very significantly the amount of animal protein that you consume. But once in a while, in, in, in a dish as delicious as the one that Rick is preparing for all of us, it's okay for you to consume a little bit of protein. Thank you. Now, what we have here is Horizon Organic Milk. I would have gotten the big one, but I don't think you should be drinking much of any milk. But if you're gonna put it in recipes or you're gonna have a half a glass with a couple of gluten-free cookies, uh, you see where I'm headed with that? This is Horizon brand. Now, Vaughn's carries their own organic brand of milk, and almost all stores do. Don't cheat on this. Don't buy the milk that's got the hormones in it. Teenage girls today that are what, 12 or 13 years old, already with the bazooms and the hips and, and, they're, and they're just being flooded with these hormones. Well, I don't want to grow boobs, okay? I don't want to do that. And, and, and I absolutely don't cheat on this kind of thing. You can also get, for example, organic chicken stock. That's a nice touch, isn't it? So this is, uh, they have organic chickens raised organically and they make the chicken stock. So when I make a pan of rice, I put two to one, you know, two, two cups of this, one cup of rice, long grain, and I put it in this pan right here and I add a cup of this. 
and it, it tastes delicious. Add a little salt and pepper, you are good to go. Here's beef stock. You know, you get what I mean? The beef stock is the same thing. Now, these cows were not fed chemicals that they're making the beef stock from. So if you need a flavor helper, picker-upper, you can mix this in a pan with a little corn starch instead of white flour. And that gives you the nice, rich gravy. You don't feel like your life is over. You don't feel like you're a hermit living all alone. You feel like somebody that matters and is important. Let's finish up with vegetables like this. Here's romaine lettuce. And I like romaine lettuce. I love that. But see, this one is or certified organic. I checked. This was 50 cents different than was the other one. 50 cents is all the difference. Look at this one. We've got or certified organic hearts of celery. Now, I've cut that up for today's shoot, but it was up to here. But this is certified organic celery. You know why you don't want to cheat on celery? Remember in junior high school when they were teaching you how things get drawn up into plants, they would put a celery stalk in a glass of red water, red food colored water. And they were teaching osmosis, weren't they? They always use celery because celery absorbs everything it's near. It would absorb you if you stood close enough to it. I'm telling you, do not cheat on the celery. Get that. We've got organic cucumber. That's going to make a difference because it's a lot like celery in that it uptakes a lot of chemicals. We'll be using that. I'm not promoting this. I'm not telling you to go buy it. But I just want you to know it's possible. <laughs> We got organic doggies. So if you know you've been treated for cancer and you're on the real district program, but you know you're having a birthday party and all the kids are having hot dogs and you know Billy doesn't get to, oh come on, he can have one. And you put that on the grill and I'm telling you it tastes just like a regular hot dog. And Udi's makes organic hot dog buns. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm not promoting you eat this every day. I'm not even promoting you eat these once a week. What I am saying is, what you need to be thinking about is quality of life. You want your life to have a high quality without using chemicals and without eating a whole bunch of junk food. Am I right? Do you agree? Are we on the same page? Okay, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we are. All right, now at our website, which is a cancer support uh, show.com. Let me say that again, cancer support show.com. What we're going to be doing is doing cooking all these things. Every week we're going to have a cooking with the doctor show and you'll see the practical application of the things that we've talked about today. So for the cancer support show.com, this is Rick Hill. Thanks for listening. All right, Dr. Contreras had to leave the room for a few minutes, so we're going to make dessert. Because <laughs> if he's here looking over my shoulder while I'm making dessert, I got to sell them on every step of the way. Okay? So you and I, a little secret between us, we are going to make dessert. But I would never do anything that would hurt you. I myself overcame terminal cancer 38 years ago. I'm not going to do anything that would hurt you. But I'm going to make something good. And about once a week, I would have about three or four bites of a dessert. Does that make sense to you? Nothing artificial, no chemicals, but just a treat like dark chocolate, something like that. Because if, if you're not enjoying life, if you're not living it fully, if you're not living large, then you're just existing. And I never wanted to do that, even though I got my health back using just good food. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to make a dessert. Oh, I got to show you. Do you like tricks? Do you like impressions? I do too. All right, we got a trick here for you. This is uh, one of our organic eggs. And um, let me show you a cool trick. I got to reverse these for a second. But I saw this on the internet the other day and I just had to show you. Because the recipe is calling to separate the egg from the egg white. What we're going to do is I want to separate that egg yolk from, by the way, this is a normal everyday plastic bottle and to just show you that it isn't a trick bottle, I found it here when I came in uh, to this kitchen and never been in here before and I found an empty plastic bottle. Okay, so get, get cued in, Alan, on that egg and all we do 
is pull that yoke into there. Et voila. And now we've got the yoke. Now you say, oh no! Oh no! I shouldn't have done that. No problem. What we do? Slide it around and then you go, oh yeah, yeah. I did the right thing. There it is. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to switch these bowls. So what we're going to do is blend this. And I'm going to add, just so this thing moves a little faster than I want it to. I'm going to add, by the way, there's only four tablespoons of sugar in this whole thing. And if I had some stevia, I would use it. That might be better. But four tablespoons of sugar is certainly not very much. The reason uh, we should be consuming very little sugar uh, or very small amounts of sugar in a diet for a cancer patient is that sugar promotes the elevation of insulin and insulin growth factors. That's uh, uh, one reason. These two proteins, insulin growth factor, insulin like growth factor and insulin, both promote tumor growth. And also they promote the uh, uh, formation of new vessels to tumors. And the second reason, which is also very, very important, is that because cancer uh, has an anaerobic metabolism, it needs a lot more sugar to obtain the energy that a normal cell needs. And thus, if you have sugar available circulating there, the cancer can take advantage of that. Now, if you limit the amount of sugar that you consume, uh, especially refined sugar, you will not allow the tumor to have any availability uh, uh, for, for sugar, for the tumor to take advantage. I would uh, recommend that uh, if you want to have uh, some sweetener, the most organic and the most natural one is stevia. There are several makes on, on the market and you can use stevia. But limit as much as possible the consumption of any type of refined sugar. You may have some honey not in, in large amounts, and also limit the amount of very high glycemic index fruits. And I'm talking specifically for those uh, of you that have cancer. For people that do not have cancer, just limit the amount of very high glycemic uh, foods as much as you can and consume a diet that it's not very rich in um, refined sugars. Thank you. And then what I'm going to do is add mascarpone cheese. This is just the best stuff. It is unbelievably good. We are making for our Italian dessert tiramisu. So we are going to fold that in in no particular order. So we're going to fold this in. Now I need someone to look out the window and see if Dr. Contreras is anywhere in sight. I don't see them, so I have here a little bit of brand, or this is uh, Bacardi rum. Once a week, a teeny bit in the recipe, not, not doing shots. <laughs> I want this clear. If he were here, I'd have to sell him one, two, good. Just to give you an idea that, uh, that we're not drinkers here. No, we're talking about you getting well. So that's gonna go in there. Oh, I am excited. Are you tingling all over yet? You will be. <laughs> All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to whip this into a frenzy. Get that out of Alan's way. These are the egg whites. And we're just going to whip those up. Okay, I've added the egg whites. And we're just going to blend this all nice, nice. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That is smelling so good and here's what I'm gonna do. Dr. Contreras, since this is talk to the doctor, of course he's not here, what we're going to do is defend why I am using coffee on the lady fingers. And then what I'm gonna do is add a layer of that. Well, oh, that is gonna be so good. And then what we're gonna do is take the gluten-free Lady Sharp fingers, and we're gonna add one more row of these bad boys. Watch this. Are you like dying to eat this? I am. And Rosa Contreras is the one that showed me to break this up and do a half. I would have not done that. She figured it out. 
and we put some more of that coffee and then we finish with the rest of the mixture and then what we're going to do is we are going to take a little bit of dark chocolate just going to sprinkle that not much now don't forget my lecture once a week a few bites do you know why i made the the pan so little <laughs> it's so you don't get much sugar mm -hmm. 